I lost weight by whitening salad, counting every single calorie, fearing a drop of oil, avoiding restaurants, resigning from lunches, feeling anxious around certain types of food, binge eating, over exercising, bulimia, anorexia, seeing myself in the mirror as someone bigger than I actually was. Sound familiar? A few years ago, I was in a world where every meal felt like a math test. Calories in, calories out obsessing over numbers that dictated my day's worth and mood. When I stuck to my diet, I was proud at the end of the day. And when I didn't, I felt anxious, ashamed and sad. I was living in a world where food was, was the enemy and my body was a battleground. But I really didn't know what I'm going through. I was denying my eating disorders for a long time. Sometimes when we are in a certain situation, we think that this is our normal. The psychological game was intense. According to experts, eating disorders aren't just about food. They are deeply rooted in our psyche, reflecting our need for control, perfection and validation. For me, it started as a quest for having a better body, a healthy body. <laughs> That's what I was telling myself. But quickly, it spiraled into an unhealthy obsession. My weight dropped. I lost my period and my energy. I had to sleep longer. I had a lot of mood shifts. I lost my happiness and my ability to connect with others. The pivotal change in my journey happened before I even set foot in a therapist's office. And it came from a photo on a beach. When I saw that photo, it wasn't through the usual lens of seeing my myself bigger than I was, I saw myself as I was, anorectic. Before this phase I also had bulimia which I healed myself, but the obsession over my body didn't stop, it led me to another phase which was anorexia. This was my wake up call. I realized the impact social media, constant diet promotions and my traumatic past had on my self-image. These perfect bodies online, the unattainable standards, they were not my reality. And my past traumas, they didn't have to dictate my present and future. Amidst this, I found myself playing the blame game. First, I pointed fingers at the diet industry. Influencers, you know, those shiny happy people promising a better you with just a few less pounds. Then I was blaming my family, reminding the sentence around the table. Do you want more? No, no, thanks, I'm fine. You sure? You look so skinny, you look too skinny. Oh my God, oh my God, you eat too much. How did you do that? I, I, I wouldn't be able to eat so much. You always eat. Oh my God, do you want more? It's like this kind of messages always left me in doubt about my body and my feelings and questions like, are you sure you don't want more? Let me doubt my hunger. I feel I'm full but yet someone else is deciding what I feel. An often overlooked but crucial aspect of our relationship with food and our bodies is the influence of our family and the social norms we grow up with. Phrases like, did you eat too much? Or, eat more, I don't want to waste food, are common in many households. These seemingly innocent comments can sow seeds of doubt and guilt about our eating choices. They make us question our body's natural signals of hunger and fullness. It's important to recognize that this isn't just about individual family members. It's a cycle of unhealed patterns that pass down through generations. Many of our parents, especially mothers, grew up with their own struggles around food and body image. Then they, you know, without being aware, pass these anxieties and behaviors on to us. Just think of how your mom speaks to herself when she looks up into the mirror. Does she, you know, says things like, oh my God, I'm too fat or oh, this, this just doesn't fit in. And so you observe it as a kid and then you take these behaviors, you take these anxieties, like, you know, maybe the jeans doesn't fit, but maybe the problem is like you have to buy a bigger jeans and that's it. The one that will fit you, that will fit into your body, not that you will, you know, fit your body into jeans. Furthermore, as women, we have historically faced immense pressure to conform to certain beauty standards. To be perfect, to not eat too much, and now men are increasingly facing similar pressures to maintain idealized body shapes, like having perfect muscles. 
It's crucial to understand that these issues are deeply rooted in social norms and expectations, not just personal choices or family quirks. Breaking this cycle requires awareness and a conscious effort to heal, not just ourselves, but also to understand and perhaps help heal these generational patterns. But blaming others, blaming myself, it didn't make me feel any better. It didn't bring me back my period. It just kept me stuck in a, you know, this cycle of self-pity and anger. And I came to realize that blame and anger wasn't just pointless. It was a barrier to, to my healing, to move forward. I had to feel it and at some point let it go. Let go of the anger, the blame and, you know, take the responsibility and care for myself. These emotions like blame, anger isn't bad. You have to feel it. I, have to, I had to feel them. Throughout this journey I have had many conversations with friends about body image and eating disorders. It's crazy and honestly a bit heartbreaking to realize that most of them have struggled or still struggling with similar things. I remember a specific incident that really stuck with me. One of my friends who saw what I was going through because I was extremely skinny and she had faced a similar battle and she noticed my weight loss. She approached me with concern, asking if everything is okay at the time. And I was deep into my journey of healing. Mm, but her question touched a nerve, like it triggered me. I reacted defensively, rejecting the idea that there was a problem. I was ashamed of what I was going through and I wasn't ready to admit how deep my struggles run because it's not only about food as I told you, it's more about our psycho and, and what we've been through during our childhood. It's okay to feel ashamed, but it's more important to try at some point break through this shame. For such a long time I was unable to talk about it with anyone, so the fact that I'm making a video about it is a huge sign of the progress and the process that I'm going through. But I know that there is someone who struggles with the same problems, so I want to share it and we are all in this together. There are moments of doubt where old habits and insecurities try to creep back in, but then I remind myself that this journey isn't linear, it's filled with ups and downs, twists and turns. It's about celebrating the small step, the gradual shift in perception and attitude. Some days I feel more in tune with my body's needs, more accepting of its shape. Others, the journey feels harder and I'm coming back to old patterns, but it's okay, it's, it's in the process. This journey isn't about perfection. It's about acceptance of ups and downs. I'm also not fond of this movement. Accept yourself as you are, love yourself. Yeah, this statement is quite bad. To actually be in this point in life where you truly say it and you feel it, this is a huge process and for some it might be a life process. This part of me that doesn't like my body, that wants to control every certain calorie will be within me forever and I have to accept it and work with it rather than suppress it, suppress it and fill it with positive thoughts. After making some progress on my own, I realized the value of seeking professional help. Therapy wasn't about finding a quick fix, it is and was about understanding the deeper reasons behind my eating disorders and learning healthier coping mechanisms. In our journey to understand the complex relationship we, ha uh, we have with our bodies and, and food, there is a crucial thing that I think all have to be aware of how our emotions and past traumas are interactly woven into this narrative. It's said that the body keeps the score holding onto emotions and memories even when our conscious minds have moved on, so all the emotions might be trapped in your body. Traumatic events, whether there are singular moments that shatter our sense of safety or ongoing stresses that touch our self-worth over time, can leave deep imprints. For some, these imprints manifest through their relationship with food and their bodies. It's as if our bodies become the canvas for expressing pain, fear or the need for control that we can't articulate in words. Eating disorders in many cases are not initially about food or body image at all. They are about coping with these unspoken, unfelt emotions that have found no other outlet. 
This part of my journey was crucial. It taught me that while self-help is powerful, there is immense strength in asking for and accepting help and talking about this. Therapy helped me to heal and it still helps me to heal from eating disorders and you know this like disorder is a complex and deeply personal journey. It's about finding your voice learning to trust yourself again and your body. I'm not at the end of the journey and honestly, I don't think there is a definitive end. It's an ongoing process of growth, learning and self-discovery, but I'm hopeful, I'm stronger and I'm committed to continuing this journey no matter how long it takes. And here's another crucial point, it takes time. Healing requires time. There's no easy, quick, fast solution. Gaining weight, losing weight, stop binging. It's, it's a journey. If someone offers you a quick recovery, leave it. You want to recover at your own pace. I want to encourage anyone struggling with similar issue to seek help. You are not alone and you deserve to heal. It's okay to not be okay and it's more than okay to ask for help. I know it costs a lot to go to a therapy. I wasn't able to afford it right now, I am. But before I was even able to, you know, to, to progress myself. Uh, so just think of it like if you cannot afford it right now, try to heal yourself, um, but at some point go to the therapy. And remember, eating disorders and body dysmorphia don't have a look, they are affecting anyone, regardless of age, body type and gender. Yes, men struggle too, but they aren't so open to talk about it because, you know, they are not willing to talk about emotions of this because of the societal pressure. Uh, but, you know, the guy at the gym, uh, the girl who seems to have it all together, your best friend, they could be all fighting silent battles with their mind, in their mind, with their bodies and around the food. And for us, it's so easy to judge. It comes so easy, but no, uh, I know that whenever I judge someone's food decision, someone's body, it comes back to me because I struggle with myself and commenting about someone's fat ass or looking at someone's play and thinking, oh my God, she'll become fat is a story about our insecurities. It says more about our problems than the other person and vice versa. It's also vital to remember just how complex and miraculous our bodies truly are. Consider, for instance, hormones that regulate everything from our hunger to our mood or the immune systems. These examples barely scratch the surface of our biological complexity. Yet, in today's world where cultures collidate and globalize at the speed of light, we find ourselves chasing after a homogenized ideal of perfection. This singular image of a perfect body and perfect diet not only simplifies but grossly underestimates the vast diversity of our body needs. Your body is an invaluable gift and so is your energy, your focus and your spirit. The moment you decide to embark on your healing journey, you will become to uncover the wonders of life that await for you. Your struggles have not been in vain. They are profound lessons living in the depths of your being, of the struggles, and there are a lot of echoes of your childhood. And be brave enough to stand up for your body and for your inner child. Your body is yours, not defined by media, family expectation or social pressures. Your hunger, your needs are uniquely yours. Explore them, understand them, and in doing so, Build this, you know, unshakable strength within you, this strength that will empower you, ensuring that no one can project their struggles onto you. Hey, and if this message resonates with you or someone you know who's struggling with the body, food disorder, share it with them. Healing is a journey worth taking. Often we are in the midst of it without realizing because we never seen or experiencing any better, any alternative, but there is a version of you beyond the counting and the obsession. This path might be challenging, but I'm, I assure you it leads to liberation. You are capable of healing and you are not alone. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode.